Dr. Fadwal Gindi, um, anthropologist at heart, which means I do field work among Greek people, <coughs> and I listen to them. Uh, I'm a retiree from UCLA in California, and uh, by invitation, I became the head of the Department of Social Sciences in Qatar University uh, to supposedly build their social sciences, which they really didn't have, under a reform movement, a reform movement coming from the top that we have to westernize the social sciences, uh, actually create them from scratch. Um, I built it, and it was wonderful and it got all dismantled, and I left. The people didn't want to westernize social sciences. Um, I, uh, I am Egyptian by birth, and I was raised in Egypt, and um, graduated from the university in Egypt. And then I went to the States to get my PhD in anthropology, because there is no anthropology. There was no, and still there isn't in Egypt, so I wanted very much to study anthropology, and I think that's what I will bring in here, this perspective that I think is the most powerful. My BA was in political science. I learned nothing. But I went to um, anthropology, and I, I learned more about political science and political life and religious life and so on. My first project was Nubia, so that's uh, of many, many years, Egyptian Nubia, I was thrown there and left. There's no transportation to go back. There's no way to go anywhere. There's the Nile on one side and mountains on the other, and that's it. No electricity, no water, running, nothing. It was beautiful. What year was that? <laughs> it was beautiful. It was uh, 60. And the project was a large Ford Foundation funded project <laughs> to study the Egyptian Nubians before the building of the high dam by uh, President Nasser of the revolution. And they wanted to record the lives of the people. And I thought, why, that sounds interesting. I don't know what it is, but sounds interesting. And I, this is when I realized what humanity is about. Is I lived in Nubia. I'm a, uh, I was raised the upper middle class. I went to the American University. I went to Cairo. I had to do my hair every other day and things like that. But when I went to Nubia, it was the perspective I needed, the shock I needed, what humankind is really about. And living there for a whole year without leaving. And then, of course, I, re I continued my study after that. Then I went to the States to get my PhD, and my mentors told me, if you want to be a good anthropologist, you cannot study your own, which is what sociologists do and what other fields do. So I went to Mexico, and I spent a total of 12 years studying Mexico, and my first publications were all on the Zapotec in Oaxaca. So I mastered that part. And then I went back to the Middle East, and when I was in Qatar, I studied uh, kinship structure in Arabia because I realized that the whole world, whether British, American, are all running there to get checks. And what it is is that these people are run by kinship, by tribe. And nobody complains about that, it seems, that it's a democracy, not democracy. Their money is good. So I think we should... Uh, really uh, reconsider, so my, uh, I don't have a set statement, but I would like to break up democracy as I uh, mentioned before, democracy has become a god. So you either follow democracy or don't follow democracy, you don't follow your bad. And the nations who don't follow democracy cannot get loans from the IMF and cannot get loans from this and cannot, so it is becoming uh, some of the population in the world uh, worship God, and the others worship democracy, and the rest of the people, which is the majority, don't know what to do. So I, I think we, we need to break up democracy, and instead of terms like prosperity, which I, it's, it's well-intentioned, I prefer something like quality of life. I mean, maybe we don't want to be prosperous, we just want to have a cup of coffee, with your neighbor 
for three, four hours to gossip and build relations and know about uh, your health and know about your life. And you know what? You may not even get cancer doing that because uh, there's a quality of life. So we want to introduce things like quality of life instead of these unitary constructs that absorb everything sound, good in conferences of that level, and then they don't relate to the people. The main thing I want to bring as an anthropologist to the table is the most powerful quality or feature of anthropology, which is the cross-cultural perspective. You don't have to yourself know everything in the world, but bring in the, the cross-cultural perspective in your analysis. So that you say, when Egyptians, 30 million of them went out in the street and wouldn't go back for several weeks or a month to get a president out of office, and then two years later do the same thing and get another president out of office, that's democracy. Because if you consider, as was mentioned in the earlier, um, popular will, that's popular will, they didn't go to a booth and make a check, but they said this is what we want and we're not leaving that place until it's done. And when the whole country was at a standstill, I guess the French people here know what a strike is, if everybody's out in the street, women, children, veiled, unveiled, old men, young men, old women, everybody was out. The doctors uh, had to go to them, so they pitched tents to serve the people who get injured uh, from the crowds or from the bakeries, open just to serve those uh, in the revolution to give them free bread, free bread. Yeah. And so, um, uh, is that popular will? Okay. And a final point, which I found very interesting, because I was following the uh, uh, revolution and I was making the students in Qatar record everything from the uh, liberation square, the songs, the dances, Egyptian style. I mean, they do everything with dancing and laughing. You know, I'm. And so, um, um, Sisi was not known to the people. President Sisi, who is president now, was not known to them. They didn't know him. The one who employed him, that may not be known to everybody, is the president who was unwanted, President Morsi, the Muslim brother, who was also not a real candidate. He was imposed from the back door, thanks to the Clintons, he, he was imposed and suddenly he became uh, president because most of the population didn't vote. And so um, he was the head of the armed forces for President Morsi. And he came out and decided when he saw that the people were not leaving the street, all of Egypt, not Cairo, he came out and said, <laughs> the army decided that they are on the side of the people. <coughs> they didn't know who he was at the time, except that he's Morsi's man. And then he said, <coughs> your demand has to be fulfilled. So I will go to President Morsi and tell him that the people want you out. I said, wow, I wish they would do that in America. I love that. <laughs> so, they <laughs> <laughs> so they, you know, we want you out. And he said no. And on the phone with Hillary and so on. And then uh, he, they gave him an ultimate, and I think you all heard about the, uh, the clock is ticking. And they waited, and then he came to inform the people that we are going to take him out by force. That is, we'll move in and carry him out. Which they did. And the people were ecstatic. I mean, there is nothing on earth that would see popular will as you would have seen the people. Joy, real joy, real authentic, spontaneous joy. Thanking Sisi and saying, okay, we want you to run, we want you to run. So he said, if you support me, I will run, not become president. And he said, but we have to work on the constitution because they put a Muslim brother constitution during Morsi, and da da da, and da 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 da. And you know what the people said in unison, and we have, we have it on record. 
Don't waste your time with these stupid procedures. Just run Egypt. We want to be safe. We want reform. We want jobs. Don't waste your time with getting the, the laws of election. He did waste his time, and he did get the election, but why? Well, there is this new God, democracy in a particular form that everybody has to conform, conform to, even though the people in America have no power to walk on the White House. I'm a sh it's terrible. <coughs> what is democracy and freedom if they can't go on the White House and pull that man out? They can't. They have to demonstrate 100 people. The police comes and tell it's the, pro the process is well known. It means it's more cathartic. It has become cathartic <laughs> to exercise democracy. And then later, the power goes on. So we will open. Yeah. Thank you very much.